Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. If you're a regular viewer of my show, something a little bit different today, okay, moving away from uh, sports posters and whatnot, and we're going to do a fantasy manipulation. If you're not a subscriber to my channel yet, uh, go check out my channel. I uh, specialise in uh, teaching Photoshop through sports manipulation. And in this piece today, I'm just doing a fantasy manipulation uh, like I've just described there. And uh, I've just called it Planet Football, um, something I've wanted to do for quite a while now. A uh, sort of a manipulation piece, we're using three different images, uh, sorry, five, using the cornfields, the boy, the mountains, the Milky Way, the football, and then uh, Saturn for some rings. And I don't know, it's just uh, just a little bit of fun, having fun with Photoshop and uh, learning as we go on. Uh, if you're a regular to Photoshop and you're not regular to my uh, channel, okay, I'm going to be pitching it at a level for uh, someone who's just found Photoshop and kind of knows a little bit about the, uh, the software, but not too much, so please bear that in mind when I'm doing the tutorial. So without further ado, we're going to get into creating this new image. So I'm going to press Command N. I'm working on a Mac. If you're working on Windows, uh, Control uh, N, and it'll bring up this new document box, okay? And pixels, okay, over here on the right. I'm going to uh, have a resolution of 1280 by 720. And I'm just going to name that Planet Football. Name it wherever you like. 300 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit, and a white background, and click Create. And then we get our canvas. So, first thing we're going to do, I'm going to head over to my files that I didn't have prepared, and I'm going to drop in the uh, mountains. And it's just this image here. All these images I'm going to link below uh, in the description, so you should be able to get them. should be off uh, Pixabay. And I'm just going to fit it in roughly around there. Now, what else I'm going to do, let me just, I'll be coming back to uh, check this one, yeah, happy with that. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut out these mountains in the background and this sky, because we're going to uh, put in the Milky Way. So, I'm going to hit P from the pen tool, and I'm just going to, I'll start on the right hand side actually, where it's a bit more defined. Okay, and I'm just going to follow the sky along. Okay. If you really are brand new to Photoshop and you're a little bit unsure of the pen tool, there's lots of uh, tutorials out there. It's, it's one of the first things that you should uh, should be able to learn and straight away um, you won't have any problems with it. So I'll speed this up and I'll get back to you. Okay, so what I've just done there is I've uh, just cut it out with the pen tool. Okay, before you do that, just make sure you've got the uh, path selected. Okay, I'm going to uh, click on select, click selection, feather radius, zero pixels, anti lines uh, tick, new selection, click OK, and then you should get these marching ants. Now, every single time I'll do this, I do it the wrong way around. I'm going to come down here to this layer mask button. Okay, I'm going to click it, do it wrong, I'll press Command Z. Okay, so I need to invert it. So I'm going to press Command Shift I or Control Shift I if you're on Windows. Okay, so the marching ants are now the other way around. Okay, I'm going to hit my layer mask, and there we go. There is my Milky Way disappeared. Now we haven't deleted those pixels, okay? All we've just done is mask them. So I like to work non-destructively. So if I disable that layer mask, it comes uh, it comes back. Don't worry about being uh, too precise with the mountains. Um, just, just cut them out and you'll be fine. Now, make sure you've got this background layer selected. And what we're gonna do now is drop in the Milky Way and it'll fall in as it's layered behind the mountains, as you can see. I'm gonna press Shift and Alt so it grows in proportion from the center and I'm just gonna move up. And this horizon on this image, I'm just gonna move it below the horizon there. Something just like that. And if you want, you could just close it in a little bit and hit enter. So we've got a little bit of light escaping from here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna add some light into the background here. So it's gonna be behind the mountains but it's going to be in front of the sky. So I'm going to create a new layer. Okay, I'm going to name this layer of the color that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using F4CA57. And I'm just going to copy that. Okay, what I like to do is, in fact, I'll type it in again over here. So that layer, uh, that color is F4CA57. Okay, it's like this yellow color. And like I've already done there, I've already named that layer. It's just so when I come back to uh, wanting to add a little bit extra, I know what color I've got. So I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool. Okay, I'm gonna to select 
a nice soft brush like this one here, hardness zero. Just going to click off to the side there, and the flow's around 10%, so we'll see how that goes. But what we want to do is we want to grow a, like a light source from the center there and just grow it out. And we're just going to enhance the light that's coming over the horizon. So you can see there we've made a small difference. And if you want to, just tap over to left and right where the light's spilling. Okay, I'm going to do another layer on top of that one. Okay, and this layer, okay, I'm going to call F36 D33. Okay, and then I'm going to head over to this color F36 D33. And I've chosen this, uh, this orange color on this palette over here. Now, this layer's on top, so it might be a little bit strong. So, what I'm just going to do is just going to drop the flow down. I'm just going to enhance that, that flow a little bit more and paint out and again just enhance the light what I would recommend is just taking your time uh, throughout this entire process okay for the purpose of this tutorial I am rushing slightly okay so it's not potentially not going to look as good as this image right here during this tutorial but um, with yourselves if you're following along just take your time so as you can see there we've enhanced, enhanced the light a little bit there we go Okay, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add the, add the countryside, okay, and I want it on top, just hit enter for now, place it on top, so make sure you've got this layer selected when you drop it in, okay, and let's make it a little bit bigger, and all I'm simply going to do, I'm going to create a layer mask, this little icon at the bottom, and again, we work working non-destructively, hit the brush tool, make sure you've got black selected here, and for the first part, okay, I'm using a, using a soft brush. Okay, I'm just going to paint away. Now, with this image, what I've found, the trees blending quite nicely. So paint away. And the trees over on this side, blending quite nicely with the rocks. So I'm just going to paint around. Again, if you want to go a little bit over, it's entirely up to you. So as you can see, I'm just going to drop it down a little bit so we get more of this mountainside. And you can see the heather over here is a similar colour, which is an added bonus, especially when you're selecting your colours. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit X, I'm going to swap over for the, uh, for the white. And I'm just going to drop the flow now down to about 50%. And the opacity, drop that down to about 50 as well. And I'm just going to paint back some of that cornfield. And what you can do as well, you can just paint in a little bit of the trees at the base of the trees there, because it, it does blend in quite nicely with, uh, with the mountains. And again, if you just want to just take it a little bit away over here, again, just take your time. So take your time blending that in. And as you can see already, we've uh, manipulated three images, and so far the image is not, not looking too bad for the stage that we're at. Okay, so we're going to do a hue saturation layer now. Onto the mountains. So I'm just going to name this one mountains. We've got countryside. And we've got sky. And this background layer you can just drag and drop onto the trash can. So select the mountain layer, go down uh, to your little adjustments panel, okay, and we're going to go for a hue saturation. Now what we want to do is create a clipping mask, so if you follow along my tutorials before you know what I'm talking about, you're going to hit hold alt, okay, and just hover over to see this icon uh, between the two layers and click it. What this does now is this layer will only directly affect the mountains layer, so everything we do when we paint on onto the mountains, we won't paint onto the sky, it'll just paint onto uh, onto here. Or it'll just affect it, sorry. So I'm gonna drop the saturation down to nine, because I want the uh, mountains to be a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna desaturate them a little bit, and drop the lightness down to minus 30. And 
straight away there you can see we've created a little bit of shadow which is great and what we're also going to do is just going to mask it away a little bit so make sure we've got black selected doing this the right way yep so I've got my opacity and flow at 50% and we were just darkening these mountains here so this bit here okay we're just going to line it up because that's where the light's going to be and I'm just going to paint up and again, you're going to get a little bit of shading down here, so I'm not going to too worry about that. And same with the mountains down there. So as you can see, making a slight difference. Again, if you want to drop the flow down, and just paint a little bit onto the bottom of the mountains there. And just colour it in. So areas like this over here, Okay, take your time and just adapt those shadows because it would be uh, it would be quite dark in there and it may be quite dark on on this area down here as well and maybe just there as well so take your time with that so if you can see we've made a little bit of a difference and we've just desaturated desaturated the ground there we go so I'm not going to uh, elaborate too much on that. Okay, um, you can see the difference that we've made straight away. Okay, next I'm going to do a levels a levels adjustment layer as well. Oh, wrong button. Hit my adjustments down at the bottom. I'm going to go up to levels. Okay, I'm just going to slide this slider. Okay, properties. Okay, it should pop up. Okay, I have it just set here on my on my window. Okay, I'm just going to slide it to 0.6. And you notice I haven't clipped it yet, so just click this icon here, and just clip it, and it'll just affect the mountains. And I'm going to slide this across to 244. And you can see we've uh, we've just darkened, darkened the area. So again, with the with the shadow now again, if we want to go back, okay, and just make an make an adjustment. Just brine it up where we need to. You see the light spilling. It's looking quite good. Pretty pleased with it. Uh, there's probably just a little bit of light around here, not too much. So you can see the area we're affecting. So if I hold Alt and click this little icon here, you can see the areas where we've actually painted and made a difference. So again, take that away, and just paint it on. Right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm fairly content with that. Again, take your time and make the effect look like the light's coming uh, from this side over there. Okay, so what we're going to do now as well, we're just going to add a little uh, blend uh, to the haze to the countryside. So this layer is just uh, going to be ab uh, just above. So I'm going to select a new layer just here and I'm going to call it haze. Okay, I'm going to hit I for my eyedropper tool. In case you've noticed on my tool palette, it's clicked here. Okay, I'm just going to select a colour there. So it's chosen this gold colour, A38207. Don't get bogged down in what, uh, whichever colour. Okay, just uh, just select a colour. There's going to be diff loads of different colours. Okay, I'm going to hit my brush tool, and I'm going to have my flow 10%, opacity 50%. See what that looks like. And again, we're just painting in a little little haze. Drop the flow down even to around two percent. Again, just to blend it in a little bit, you can see the difference we've made there. If you want to just drop that fill down to 60% as well, just so it's not as strong. There you go, you see we've done, done there, just drop the opacity down a little bit as well. So, fantastic, there's our haze. So our image is coming, uh, coming along quite nicely now. So, we're going to add some uh, more light uh, above the countryside and the mountains now. So. I'm going to hit my eyedropper tool now and I'm going to set 
select a color from there. So blended this color, we've got EFC65C, EFC65C, copy that, hit OK, and I'm going to create a new layer. So again, this layer is now going to be on top. I'm just going to rename it. So I've Command C copies it, Command V paste it. Okay, hit B from the brush tool. Got my flow right down. Okay, I'm just going to start painting on. You can see already starting to have an effect. And just painting on there. Okay, it's entirely up to you how strong you'd like to go. But the effect we're trying to achieve is the light spilling over the horizon and just blending in. As you can see, starting to achieve that effect now. Again, you might want to think about just it spilling up onto the side of the mountains as well. Not too strong, not too little. Just naturally, that's the way the light's going to go. So the light's going to be strong over here. Again, it might just spill over onto these rocks as well. Careful not to go into these shadows just there or just there. So you can see how we're making the light spill over. Um, in fact, we'll uh, just add a dash there and call it light as well, so we know we know what it's doing. And another little thing we're going to do. So I'm going to select the countryside layer. Okay, I'm going to do an adjustment layer. Go to my levels. Okay, clipping mask. All right, again. You can just right click as well or double click if you're on a Mac and create clipping mask. And we're just going to use the slider. I'm going to move that one just on the images I'm using to 8.7, 8.6. And this is going to go over here to 2.4.2. And we've just darkened it up a little bit there. And that is pretty much our background complete. So fantastic. And we're going to group them. So I'm going to select the top layer. I'm going to hold shift, select the bottom layer, I'm going to press command G and I'm going to group them. I'm going to call this background. Okay, next thing, I'm going to uh, bring in the ball. So here's the football, computer load up, hit enter. Okay, I'm just going to select the eclipse tool. Okay, so the shortcut for that is U. But if you've got a rectangle, just hold down, okay, and you get this menu pop up. I'm going to select the clips tool. Before I do that, I'll make sure I've got path selected. Okay, I'm just going to hold shift, grows in proportion. So I've got a perfect circle. Now press Command T. And I'm going to hover over the ball and put it roughly on top. And then what you can do is, it doesn't have to cover the entire ball, but just move it out so we're going to have a perfect circle and just down, so it may be a little bit of an oblong, and hit enter. Now I've got my circle here, okay, notice this ball isn't perfectly circular. I'm going to make my selection, same as before, feather radius zero pixels, anti lies new selection. I'm going to hit my layer mask, and there we go, we've got our ball. Press Command T again, and I'm going to hold Shift and Alt, and it's just going to shrink down. And we're going to place it roughly around there. Now you notice we've got the shadow on the underside, it's on the wrong side. So I'm just going to hold shift, sorry, just going to hold my mouse and spin it around to something like that. Okay, enter now, let me just check the size of this ball. Yep, I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. It's one of those old school footballs that everyone had as a kid. Um, no one knew where it came from. <laughs> old, proper old school classic nice football. So, Command T, and it's going to be a main focal point of the image. So again, it's entirely up to you how big you want to make it. Um, but I'm content with that side size. And make sure you've got this mask selected. I'm going to hit my brush tool. I'm going to zoom in. Flow. I've got down at two percent. Opacity fifty. And what you can do is just soften the edge of the ball just by going around it and again because of the light you just want to paint away just a small little fraction okay 
with um, just softens it up a little bit. Press Command Zero and zoom back out. Go. Okay, I'm going to color select again, so I'm going to hit I from my glow. In fact, I'm going to make sure I've got the background selected. Command uh, color select. Okay, I've got this uh, this color here, so I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to select my uh, football. So again, sorry if you didn't understand that. Make sure you got your background selected and press I and then select because if you've got the football and you press I, okay, it's not going to uh, pick it up potentially. So make sure you've got your football level selected. New layer. We're going to clip it. Hit my brush tool. And I'm just going to paint on. Excuse me. Just moving my notes around. I'm just going to paint on the colour. Because we've got the flow right down. Okay, I can afford just to play around with it. So I've done it a little bit too much there. Just going to cut diagonally across. So that's looking a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. And come on, V. That space. Highlight, I'll call that. And then I'm going to do some shading. So I'm going to clip that one as well. Make sure I've got black selected. Hit OK. Swap them around, press X, in case you've got your black as your full colour. And again, and you can just enhance that shadow just to really enhance the 3D nature of the ball. So we've got that glow going on. Just to... Yeah. That's looking, uh, that's looking good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And sorry, with this uh, highlight here, if you want to change the blend mode to soft light as well. So again, it's a little bit softer. So these... Uh, these blend modes, all right, they just affect the, the way the pixels perform compared to the pixels underneath. So again, you can always go back, make sure you've got that level selected, and it just softens it up a little bit. And it just enhances it again. So if I was on normal, it's really strong. But if I'm on soft light, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to do, I'm going to add Saturn. So I'm going to bring in the planet Saturn. Shift and Alt. Okay, I'm going to bring it down. And I'm going to bring the opacity. Bring the opacity down. Just so I can see where I'm placing it. And luckily, it's gone straight in at a decent size. So just size it up. Hit Enter. Okay, bring that opacity right up. Change the blend mode to screen. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, layer mask. So go back down. Layer mask, hit your brush tool. I bring the opacity, the flow up to 50, keep the opacity at 50. Okay, I'm just going to paint away this box up here. Again, if you just need to just go a little bit stronger initially and do that. So careful not to touch the rings at this point. So I'm just going to paint this away and I'll speed it up. Okay, so the idea of the rings then, okay, it's just to make the football look like it's uh, some sort of close planet in proximity to the planet that we're on. Uh, obviously, we've got Planet Football here, that's the name of the project, and it just doesn't look like there's a football that's zooming towards your face <laughs> to knock you out. So that's the reason why we've done that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some shade as well. So I'm going to select a new layer, clip that, make sure I've got black selected, hit the brush tool, and pass it, you can to 100, just at 5, and I'm just going to just paint on a little bit of shade just on this side over here. I may have just done that a little bit too much. If I have, just change the opacity down a little bit. And that looks, yeah, it looks okay uh, for what we're trying to achieve. As you can see here, I did, uh, I did take my time. So again, just those rings, just because of the shading and uh, how it would be. So take your time with that. Okay, and I'm going to group these. I'm just going to call this Command Top. Hold the top layer, hold Shift down, select the bottom layer, Command G. I'm just going to call that ball. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bring in the boy. Okay, entirely optional. 
Uh, in fact, what I'm just going to do to speed it up, I'm just going to open this PSD file and drag him across. Okay, take your time, cut him out, uh, like I've done here on this previous image, and just drop him in. Command T, Command 0 to resize, and just drop him in. So again, just take your time, use the pen tool. If you really are new to Photoshop, can't emphasize enough how good it is to use uh, to use that pen tool. And uh, it just totally uh, gives you a, a, another another sort of freedom with the ball. So where did I place him? Roughly around there. Yeah, that'll do. So what I'm going to do with the boy is then, I'm just going to add a layer mask, okay? And just so he looks like he's walking through the crops, I'm just going to paint him away a little bit. Yeah. Uh, hit V, just drop him down a little bit. Yeah, again, the boy's totally optional, or any sort of footballer that you want to put in there, just uh, lots of Ronaldo and Messi's walking away. Uh, but I just wanted to use... Uh, just use a child or something, something a bit, little bit different from the norm. Okay, I'm just going to add a curves layer to this now. So again, hit the little button below and go to curves, the adjustment layer. Okay, now I'm simply going to do, I'm going to select around here. I'm just going to raise it up a little bit. I'm going to select this icon here just to make sure it's clipped. And again, I'm just enhancing it slightly, just dropping them up there. I'm going to do a hue saturation layer. So make sure I've got my, uh, just call that boy. Make sure I've got my boy level selected. Again, hue saturation. I'm just going to desaturate him a little bit because I just want to help blend him into the image. Okay, and the lightness is going to be down at minus 15. Yep, fantastic. And select him again and brightness and contrast layer. Okay, I'm just going to drop the brightness down to minus 32. So if you notice, because I'm selecting the boy layer, then I'm adding the adjustment underneath that first clipping mask. They're all clipping automatically. And a new layer, just select the top layer, new layer, so you've got it on top, and then just drag it down underneath the boy. Okay, make sure you've got black selected. And just play around with the flow. And it's looking absolutely dreadful there. If you want to change the shape of the brush, then just right click and then adjust the size. Something something like that. Okay, probably not quite as strong. Okay, I'm not really going to get too bogged down in the uh, in the shadow. What we can do with the shadow as well, call that layer shadow. You can take your time. Once you've uh, painted on your shadow, click filter, go to blur, and just give it a Gaussian blur. And depending on what you want to do, just 2% looks okay. That's fine. So at the minute, we're just going to uh, we're going to blend this in. So that's our boy layer. Again, select the bottom layer, hold shift, select the top layer, command G, and we'll call that boy. Now, finishing touches then, so we're going to enhance the image even more. Go down, we're going to select brightness and contrast. Brightness, slam it right down to minus 150, contrast up to 50. Now you're thinking, what is going on? Why are you doing that? Whoa. Select this little layer up here, okay? Don't start panicking, hit the brush tool. Nice soft brush. Okay, we'll go with, we'll go around to 50% to start with. Opacity to 50%. And then, whoa, look at this. Yep. We're just going to paint on that light spilling up these mountains. Okay, probably a little bit too strong. Drop it down to about 20. And you can see we don't have to paint all the mountains, so some of the mountains can remain in the shadow. So again, 
play it to your heart's content. If you want to keep the top of the Milky Way dark, add sort of like a little vinaigrette feature. It's entirely up to you. A little bit too strong there. Okay, the light's spilling out. And it just enhances it. And I'm liking the look of that. And again, because of the boy, I'm just going to keep the shade in like sort of some sort of triangular fashion. Hit X, you got the white if you want to just paint on underneath here. Okay, again, just have that vinaigrette feature. Entirely up to you. Gone a little bit strong up there, but just play around with it and see how you feel. So, again, I'm not going to get too bogged down in that. So, you can see it's starting to take shape now. So, there we go. There's our brightness and contrast. It's looking good. I'm going to add a little bit of a color balance as well. So, you notice now all these layers, we're not clipping them, they're affecting the entire image. So, I'm going to go to color balance and the cyan. I'm just going to Drop it towards it, like minus 11, 12. Yep. And the blue, we're just going to add that up to minus, well, sorry, plus 13. So you can see there, just enhancing the, enhancing the color. I'm going to do another adjustment layer, and it's going to be color lookup. So select color lookup. And the 3D look file, okay, we're just going to change to soft warming dot look. Okay, these should already be preloaded. And I'm going to drop that opacity because it's quite strong down to 40%. There we go. Yeah, 39, that'll do. And I'm going to add a gradient map as well. So I'm going to select it again. And gradient map down the bottom. Now the colors I'm going to use, so hit this purple color. So the orange on the right should be the color that I want to use which is FF7C00, so it should already be a bit of a preset. And then rather than a purple, okay, I'm just gonna use, uh, what have I wrote down here, is it 052849, which is a blue, yeah. Hit okay. Hit okay again. And what blend mode did I use for that? Let me just check. And yeah, I've just dropped it down to 20%. So drop my opacity right down. And I changed the blend mode to soft light there. But again, entirely up to you. I would prefer it on soft light, it looked quite nice. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. And then again, if you're using CS6 um, below, you might not have this feature, but if you're using uh, Photoshop CC, okay, go to the top. In fact, before we do that, we're going to uh, screenshot the uh, entire image, so like a print, so hold Command, Shift, Alt, and E, or Control, Shift, Alt, or E, and we're doing like a visible layer. I'm going to change that to a smart object, so it means we can edit it uh, in layman's terms. Go to Filter, okay, I'm going to use the Camera Raw Filter. Okay, so camera raw filter. Okay, what I did is I went uh, to temperature, I just raised it to plus five. So you can see the image on the right is uh, the after, we've got the before and after. Okay, the tint, I kept the same. The exposure, I kept the same. The contrast, okay, kept that the same. Highlights, I moved that to plus 70. 69, yeah. Shadows dropped down to minus 66. Thereabouts, and all I simply did was just played around till I found something that uh, that I liked. The whites I moved up to plus twenty. There we go. The blacks kept the same. Now the clarity, what I did is just to soften it up, so it wasn't like completely kapunk or it wasn't uh, too sharp. All right, I just dropped that down to minus twenty. I thought it gave a nice soft feel. The vibrance plus ten. The saturation. Minus 10. And what I also did is I clicked across to the grayscale, so the luminance with the reds. I just desaturated the reds a little bit, and that was just affecting. Sorry, 
wrong slider. Go right back to zero. It's a saturation. So with the reds, just drop that down, and it's just affecting the color of the shirts. Just felt it was a little bit too strong. So again, minus minus twenty should be fine. Split toning. Okay, just move that up to around two three three two three four. What? Uh, so not for the highlights. That was for the shadows. And all it simply does. Two, three, three, two, three, four, and then just gave the shadows a little bit of a blue. And you can see the difference that I've made from, from this image on the right to this image on the left. I've hit OK, and that is the final image. That is our fantasy manipulation of Planet Football. Looking fantastic. As you can see, probably gone a little bit too strong on the uh, brightness and contrast again, so I'll hit the brush tool. Again, you can just... Uh, Paint some of that away, um, but you'd have to go back and uh, do all your edits onto your uh, stamp visible layer. But um, yeah, thanks for watching everyone. I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I uh, I love making it, really enjoy doing these fancy manipulations. I think I'll do a, a few more coming up this year. Um, try and keep them maybe sports themed or something, or maybe just go, uh, go straight into maybe a little bit of sci-fi as well. So... Yeah, thank you. Hope you uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you're still watching, hit that like, uh, smash that like button, hit subscribe. Really appreciate it, and uh, check out my channel. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.